In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my most used notions from my notions bag. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I'm gonna be your host. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you my favorite knitting notions, or at least the ones that I tend to grab most often from my Knitting Notions pouch. Everything I mention here is gonna be linked down below in the description box. So if you see something that I share here that you're interested in, definitely check the description box below for all of the links down there. Let's go ahead without further ado and open my little uh, toolkit here or Notions bag and see what we have going on. Okay. First things first, this Notions pouch. So this is a cosmetics bag, like a travel roll-up cosmetics bag that was given to me by my mom. She had had it for a long time and she just handed it over to me. And I actually had it as a cosmetics bag before I decided to use it as a Notions pouch. Um, but the reason I decided, and it's, I mean, it's starting to kind of fall apart. Like you can see the gold, I don't know what you call that kind of fabric, but it's starting to tear a little bit here. This thing's pretty old. I mean, not like crazy old, but it's, you know, it's not new. Anyway, but the reason I loved it so much is because it has all of these clear pockets, zipper pockets. And you know, this is pretty typical for like a travel um, cosmetics pouch, something to hold your jewelry. But I just really thought that was perfect for knitting notions because I could see everything that I had here. And I have loaded this thing to the brim and I don't use everything that's in here, um, not by a, any stretch of the imagination, but it's kind of like when you get into a craft, you tend to wanna make sure you have all of the tools that you're going to need if and when something should come up and you need a particular tool. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like having a tool bench or a workbench. You wanna make sure you have everything just in case, you never know. And so I've been accumulating tools and little bits and bobs over the years that I've been knitting, but only um, there are only a handful of things in here that I reach for most frequently, and that's kind of what we're gonna dive into today. So let's go ahead and begin. I have made a list here so it's easy for me to keep track of the things that I'm gonna show you. And the first thing on my list is a rigid ruler. So I know a lot of us have some kind of a flexible measuring tape and I have that as well and I'll show you what I have in just a moment. But I think it's really important in your Notions bag or whatever it is that you use for your Notions to also have some form of rigid measuring device. Um, I have a couple actually. I'll show you all the ones that I have. I have way more than a, a single person needs, but I accumulate them and I just keep them in there. And yeah, that's just, that's just the end of that. So a rigid ruler, kind of like this one. This is my favorite one. This is by a Finnish company called Suka Ploki, and they have a lot of different crafting accessories. They make these rulers out of recycled plastic. And I really love this one. It's really, um, you know, it's, it's a plastic, ruler. It's nice, but it's nice and sturdy. It has very clear, you know, measurements on there. You can see everything really easily. It's not too big. I feel like you need something like this that's, you know, no bigger than six inches. This is a five inch ruler because it needs to be able to fit in your notions bag. You can't have a full size ruler because that's just not the most convenient. So this is a really convenient size. Another one that I have is this one that I picked up on Amazon. They no longer sell this. I can't find it anywhere on Amazon. I will link to a, you know, to a particular one down in the description box, but this is just a basic wooden ruler that also has a knitting needle gauge on it as well. Highly recommend, I mean, if anytime you can get notions for your knitting or crochet that serve multiple purposes, I definitely think that that's a plus because you just don't have a lot of real estate to store all this stuff in. So anytime, this one definitely doesn't follow that particular guideline, it is simply just a ruler. But anytime that you can have device or little notions that serve multiple purposes, that's just a really good thing to have. So I have a few different knitting gauge um, measuring devices or knitting needle gauge measuring devices. This is the Sally Bates one that I have had since the beginning. I wanna say that this came, not Sally Bates, Susan Bates, excuse me. I wanna say that this came in my little knitting tool bag that I got when I first started knitting, like way back in 2010. 
yeah, and I've had this forever. It's a little beat up, it's kind of bent, but this is my go-to when it comes to checking needle sizes. I'm always, I have these other two, but I'm always searching for this one. I don't know why, but I love this one. And then this one came to me from um, Nomad. Uh, Nomad is my yarn supplier for Fiber for the People. I buy all of my undyed yarn almost exclusively from Nomad. I know that that's kind of taboo to tell you that, but I like transparency and their yarn is fantastic. Um, but they, that was like a free gift at some point. I'm not really sure. So it has kind of like measuring on the sides for those two inch gauge swatch, you know, five centimeter gauge swatches. And then it also has the needle gauge as well. So my first go to the one I reach for when it comes to measuring devices is a rigid measuring device or a rigid ruler. And if you can have those things serve multiple purposes, like checking your gauge in these little gaps right here or doing your needle gauges, that's always a bonus. All right, while we're on the subject of measuring devices, I don't have this on my list necessarily, but I'm gonna include it here because I love this measuring tape and every knitter or crocheter or really crafter in general needs a really good measuring tape. This one is by Clover and it has something on it. Let's see, okay. Yeah, this is just a Clover um, measuring tape. Picked it up on Amazon. It's just a fantastic, very reliable measuring tape. Um, the reason why, now these are a little bit more pricey. Clover uh, supplies are really good quality. In my opinion, I tend to, if I need to have like a an accessible notion to go in my bag, something I could pick up at a big box craft store or I know Amazon's gonna have it, I always shoot for Clover. I just really trust the brand and I trust the quality. I have had a lot of really cutesy measuring tapes in my time, the ones that look like little animals, you know, all of the cutesy little measuring tapes, and they just don't last because the measuring tape that's inside of that cute little outer, you know, animal casing is just not the greatest quality. This one, however, is that same kind of retractable measuring tape, but it's just a fantastic quality. I know something like this made of plastic, it seems like how, you know, how great can it be? I'm telling you, this little measuring tape is a beast. It, it holds up to all kinds of like, you know, I can pull this thing all the way out and it's, you know, it goes to 60, 60 inches. I almost said 60 feet, yeah, I wish. It goes to 60 inches, it retracts cleanly. My kids get a hold of it and I'm not too worried about it. I, I know this is a lot to say about a retractable measuring tape, just trust me. This is the one you want if you're gonna get a retractable measuring tape. I've linked to it down below, it's my favorite. Okay, this next uh, tool notion is kind of on the splurgy side of things. And I know that you can get a lot of, uh, you can get much cheaper versions of this thing. I totally get it. However, um, I will make a case for more expensive scissors. Um, I have, and I wanna say I have some in here. Um, usually when you start knitting or you start getting into any kind of like a fiber craft, you always will get your first pair of scissors and I don't think I have them in here. I'm not sure where they are. Um, and they usually are the little gold sewing scissors that kind of look like a bird. And those are really cute. They photograph really nicely, but I'm telling you, they're great for thread and sewing. I don't personally find them to be the greatest for yarn. They just don't cut um, as easily. You end up splitting the yarn depending on, you know, the, the size, the, the, the weight of the yarn. It, they're just not the most reliable. And they're kind of lo like light duty. They're not very heavy duty. They can break. It's just, it's this whole thing. And so I am of the opinion to buy, to spend more for quality um, so that it lasts longer. So that you're also paying for longevity of that particular item. And I believe that scissors fall into that category. And so the scissors that I use are called bonsai scissors. These are scissors that are traditionally used when pruning little Japanese bonsai trees. Now this uh, particular pair I picked up at a craft festival uh, I almost want to say it was, I can't remember if it was Stitches West, but it was a craft festival from a hand maker um, that forges scissors. Okay. Now I love these because they're heavy duty and I'm literally heavy. Um, they are very sharp. You have to be really careful, especially around little ones. They're not, you know, not to be, not to be taken lightly. They're very sharp. They cut beautifully. 
Um, they're just reliable. I, I know they're gonna cut, that you can make pom-poms with these, and I'll talk about that in a second. I know they're gonna cut my yarn cleanly without creating little frayed ends. They're just really good quality scissors, and I feel like a crafter needs a really good quality pair of scissors. I mean, shoot, um, sewists, I have my sewing scissors uh, over there somewhere, but sewists always have really beautiful um, scissors because they really need that quality, and I feel like the same is true for um, knitters and crocheters and fiber artists as well. You just need a good quality pair of scissors and these are mine. I love them. I have linked down below to another set of scissors that are bonsai scissors by Wazakura and they are a Yasuki Japanese steel bonsai scissor and they're beautiful and they even come in a really nice case. You can find that link down below. It's almost identical to the ones I have here except the ones on Amazon have a really cool gold uh, kind of emblem on them. They're really pretty. I'm very tempted to pick up another pair of those um, because I would like to have a bonus pair lying around. But definitely invest in a really good quality and heavy duty, yet um, not too large set of scissors for your Notions bag. Okay, now I'm going into this top pocket because this top pocket seems to hold almost everything that I reach for most frequently. I wonder why. And I am certain, there we are, here we have it. Okay, this is a knitting repair hook. Um, you can get these at any big box craft store. You can pick them up on Amazon. I'll link to everything, like I said, down below. It is just like a really tiny crochet hook. You can see the hook end right there. And then it has just a regular needle tip at the end. And this is what you use to ladder down and pick up dropped stitches. Now, if you're not familiar with how to pick up a dropped stitch, or if you uh, are not familiar with laddering down to a dropped stitch, there are tons of tutorials about this particular um, technique for picking up dropped stitches here on YouTube. Maybe one day I will make my own, but this tool makes that process really easy because as opposed to using a crochet hook, which might have a wide handle or a rubber handle, making it really hard to get in and out of the fabric. This provides you with that needle tip as well as the hooked end. So you can go in, grab your stitch, pull it out, and then you can work your way back up the ladder using the needle tip of the repair hook. So every, in my opinion, every knitter needs a, um, a small knitting repair hook in their Notions kit. This one is by Susan Bates. Again, you can find this anywhere. They are not expensive. Sometimes they come in a set of two, um, and sometimes they come in multiple sizes, depending on the weight of your yarn. I find this one to be pretty universal. I mean, this will work for anything from fingering weight all the way up to an Aran weight. Maybe when you get to a chunky weight, you have to just finagle it a little bit more, but it's a pretty universal size. So you're definitely gonna need a knitting repair hook. Okay, along those lines, this is kind of similar. Every knitter needs a darning needle. This is my darning needle of choice, and it's also just the darning needle that I seem to have left over. Um, when you buy darning needles from the store, you, they usually come in like a little plastic canister um, with a few different ones in there. And I have this one here. You can also purchase ones that are plastic. I have, see, look at this, I have so many this is another one of those little repair hooks. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, another repair hook. I have a lot of duplicates of things. You're gonna acquire duplicates. Look, I mean, look at this. I have, I mean, I know we're going off on a tangent here, but here, more scissors. See, little cutesy scissors. I got these from Fringe Supply Company a while ago um, before they shuttered their store, and they're not that great. I, I wish they were, but they're not. Nothing beats those bonsai scissors. Back to the darning needles, however, you will acquire duplicates. Some darning needles. You can also get these ones. These are the plastic darning needles. They're for much wider yarn gauges or heavier weight yarns. They also have this little offset tip here for helping you get in and under those stitches. I have this one and I have these two smaller ones here. I know I have a few others lying around. I've got little bowls of notions kind of everywhere, so I would have to really hunt things down. But when it comes to the stuff I use most frequently, it always stays in this pouch. So those are my darning needles, the ones I use most frequently. Definitely think that you need those if you don't have them. However, if you're watching this podcast and you've had any experience knitting, chances are you already have these. These are my favorite. Now this is, um, I guess this kind of depends on if you knit 
items that require pom-poms. However, I feel like every knitter or crocheter is going to come across the need to make a pom-pom at some point in their knitting crocheting career. I just think it's gonna happen. I mean, pom-poms are unavoidable. Even if you don't like wearing pom-poms on your hat, you're probably gonna knit a pom-pom hat for somebody else. It's just gonna happen. So you're going to need to make sure that you have pom-pom makers. Now, you don't need all of these pom-pom makers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pom-pom makers. You only need one. In fact, nope, that's it. Yeah, you really only need a size 65 pom-pom maker if you're going to, if you feel like the only thing you're gonna be making is pom-poms for hats. This size is going to get you a pretty standard pom-pom. And a standard pom-pom, in my opinion, actually, I don't know, this one might be a little big, but this, you know what, let me grab my son's hat that I just finished for him. Okay, this is actually not the hat that I just finished if you've been watching the podcast. Um, this is a hat that I made for my son a while ago, but this is a pretty standard size pom-pom. So this hat here, it's a smaller hat. This is meant to fit a small child, but this pom-pom, I made using this pom-pom maker. You can pretty much assume the pom-pom is going to be roughly the diameter of the pom-pom maker um, in general. So you're gonna trim it and you can always adjust the size of the pom-pom by trimming, but they make that pretty easy for you by providing you options for creating pom-poms of various different sizes. So I have a 65, I don't know what that means necessarily let's see here okay this pom-pom maker if i'm measuring the diameter it's about two and a half inches across i don't know what 65 means i don't think it, it doesn't matter okay so this is the 65 they also have the 85 this is the big bertha pom-pom this pom-pom maker makes and i have a hat here where i made a really big pom-pom so this is my nutshell hat it's a pattern that i offer in my pattern shop when I made this hat, I made it the hugest pom-pom. So here's the number 85 pom-pom compared to the one I showed you before. You can see the difference in size. That is this pom-pom maker here. And sometimes, I mean, you're gonna want, you're gonna want a big pom-pom. Don't fight it, it's gonna happen. So there is, a, yeah, that's a big pom-pom there. And then you can make pom-poms. This one, oh. Yeah, so this is another one that's just kind of your average pom-pom size, that 65. But what's kind of cool is they also provide you with these little, little pom-pom makers. How am I gonna, look at these. So they have, there's like no numbers on them, but they make tiny little pom-poms. So you can get really cutesy with it. So you have that one, this one is the 35 pom-pom maker. There's all sorts of reasons that you might want to make little tiny pom-poms and then this is kind of a in between that 35 and the 65 there. And um, I have my simple house slippers. They're so cute with a little pom-pom. So simple house slippers here. Um, I'll link to these down below too. But this is a pom-pom that I added to the top of these. And to make this pom-pom I used size 45. Lots of different things that you can do with these pom-poms. I mean, just think about it, like a Christmas ornaments, cute little amigurumis that have pom-poms, I don't know. All sorts of reasons why you might want a variety of different pom-pom makers. So definitely add that to your list if you don't have pom-pom makers on hand. And also too, if you're one of those individuals who decided that they were gonna make pom-poms using a fork, that's fine, and if it works for you, that's fine. But I'm gonna tell you right now that these are not that expensive. They're very easy to find, and it makes making pom-poms like a pleasure. I made a pom-pom garland, can't remember what it was for, um, a while ago, and I was whipping out pom-poms left and right. Oh, it was for my, um, my youngest's room when he was born. We put like a garland of pom-poms in his room, his baby room. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Like you can really just whip them out. So I mean, if you're doing the fork pom-pom thing, that's great, but you really need to consider stepping it up and trying something like this to make your life a little easier. It's a lot of fun. So pom-pom makers, definitely need those in your notions kit. Okay, the next thing is something that we all have and we probably all have them lying around. And you probably, if you were to lift up your couch seats in your living room, you'd probably see just these all over the place along with your, you know, coins and pennies and quarters or whatever. And that is ring stitch markers. Now, 
I love a really cutesy kind of um, dangly stitch marker as much as the next person, but you really need to have some just basic ring stitch markers. And what I mean by that are little stitch markers that look like, oh, okay, let's just get serious, this. Little ring stitch markers that go right over your hook, or excuse me, your needle, hold your place, Nothing fancy, nothing more complicated than that. I have some that look like this. I think these right here I found by just Googling brass rings or I went to Michael's. I can't even remember, um, but I just got a whole bunch of these. They're just little brass rings because I wanted something that wasn't too garish like these ones here that are bright colors. I just wanted something basic. These ones are also fantastic. People call these the light bulb stitch markers. Um, those are great there. You can open them and close them. I have a ton of those just so many of them coming out of my eyeballs all over the place And even in my notions pouch, there's little pockets in here. I've got them in here I've got them in here. I have a whole separate pouch somewhere that's just loaded with them But if you're just starting out knitting or if you're finding that you're being bitten by the cute stitch marker bug and trust me We all have been and we all you know love to go to Etsy and find the cute little stitch markers that people are making They're great and that's fine, but you really need just some basic ring stitch markers. Dedicate a pocket in your Notions bag just for the basic stitch markers. Okay, the next thing that I have in my Notions bag, and this is basic, I mean, you don't need to go out and do anything fancy for this, but I really like to have a good pen and a nice pencil for taking notes on charts or patterns or what have you. Or if you have a paper uh, journal that you keep track of all of your knitting projects, something that you can pull out to take notes, you need to have that in your Notions bag, it's going to come in handy. And as is the case with a lot of the Notions that I have, I kind of like these things to be nice, to look nice, to, to kind of, Keep in mind something that you wouldn't mind photographing. Um, if you're posting something on Instagram, you want them to photograph well. And so the pencil that I choose to keep in my Notions bag, should I ever decide I wanna put it in a photograph, or just something that gives me a nice aesthetic when I reach for it, it just looks nice, are these black wing matte pencils. So these are pencils that are used by artists um, or drafters. They're a dark black matte lead. Um, and they have this really fantastic eraser at the top. They're a little on the pricey side, but they are really lovely pencils. I love drawing with them. I love taking notes with them. They just have a really good, they just leave down a really good stroke on the paper. And, and I love that. And what's also cool about these is that the erasers, um, should you wear your eraser down, you can actually adjust it. So the eraser comes out of the top of the pencil and if you find that the, the eraser gets worn down, you can just pull the eraser out of its little bracket like this. You can see there's like a bracket there. You can pull it up a little higher and then slip that back into the top of the pencil to give you some more eraser at the top of your pencil. So these are the Blackwing matte pencils. I'll link to these down below. Love these pencils for taking notes, whether it's my podcast uh, show notes, whether it's you know pattern notes, I just like to have one of these on hand. And then the pen that I have, it's just a, like a vintage pen that I picked up. I think I picked this up from Boston General Store. They have some really cool stationary products, um, but this is just kind of like a pretty simple pen, but it's cool because it photographs really well. So I love that. So a nice pen, a good pencil, and I also have a highlighter in here as well for highlighting different um, rows on your chart that you've completed. If you're using paper charts, definitely think that's important to have. So good pencil, good pen, and possibly a highlighter. Okay, the next thing that I have is not, I mean, it's not essential. You don't need to have something like this in your Notions bag, but it might be handy to just have around so that you can use it um, if you need it. But I think that these work best when they are on hand. Um, because you tend to need these, uh, you don't plan on needing these. You just all of a sudden need them and wish that they were right there at hand. And that is the, um, I don't know what you would call this. I think you would call this like knitting technique tags, but this is by the brand Katrinkles and you can find this on Etsy. And what they are, are these little, um, kind of like laser cut wooden tags that you can keep in your notions bag that show you the directions for various different knitting techniques that we so commonly forget how to do. For example, um, 
German short rows. It's just real quick. It gives you how to do German short rows. It's on a small piece of wood that you can keep in your notions bag. So you don't have to go to Google or YouTube and look up a tutorial. It's just right here. I have one for make one right, make one left. I always forget, you know, whether you're going in the front or the back um, of the stitches, this just makes that a little bit easier for me to remember. And then I have one for the Kitchener stitch as well, because even though it's something that you do so frequently and it's pretty easy to remember, you just never know and you need that reminder and it's nice to have these on hand. So these are the three that I have, German short rows, make one right, make one left, and the Kitchener, but there are a lot of options for these and I'll link to the Etsy shop down below. Um, it's like I said, by um, Katrinkles. Okay, this next one, I have a few different varieties of these that I use. Um, and these are row counters. Now, a lot of us have some kind of an app on our phone where we can keep track of which row or round that we're on. But sometimes, you know, you get tired of being on your phone all the time or having your phone right there. It's nice to just have a really simple tool that can keep track of your rows for you, especially if you're working on something that's not gonna be a long-term project, that you just need something to track rows for a short period of time, and that's it. And so these are my two favorite. This first one is by Clover looks like this. You can get these on Amazon. You can get these at Joanne or Michael's or any major craft store. They're really easy to come by, but they're just clicker row counters and it's really simple. So this is one of my favorites by Clover. Again, a brand that I trust. I feel like they have really good quality products. So I love that. And then this next one is another one that you can find pretty easily, but they're also on Amazon or, um, I know that there's some Etsy companies that have these, but they are little ring row counters that you can put on your finger and you just use your thumb to count your rows as you go. And what's kind of nice about this is it's always at hand. It's always right here or whatever hand you prefer to have it on. So you can work on your project. It doesn't get in the way. And then you just take your thumb and add your row. And then you look back and you're good to go. The only thing about these, if you have little ones and you leave these hanging around, <laughs> inevitably something's going to happen where it's gonna get clicked on accident. I mean, this right here for a little one is just like the most amazing thing. They just wanna go and like, and now you're like 12 rows ahead of where you thought you were. Same with this, there's a button on there. I mean, hello, it's not only a button, it's a shiny button. Yeah, so you gotta be careful with these. I mean, they're not foolproof. There are gonna be instances where you're gonna get messed up. Somebody's gonna click the button. It's, it is what it is. But if I have to use manual stitch or row counters um, that are not on my phone, those are my go-to. Okay, this next one is not something you can purchase anywhere, not, not directly at least. And I actually shared a little tutorial about how or why I use these um, a while ago. I'll link to that down below um, and you can check it out. But these are bread bag clips. So um, you may be familiar with these. These are the little clips that you get from a bag of, or a loaf of bread at the store, the little clips that hold the bread bag together. These guys are fantastic for kind of holding your yarn ends together so they're not, you don't have these really long yarn ends hanging at the bottom of your project. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, this is an example that is kind of extreme because of the way that I happen to be knitting these socks. I have so many ends, but I'll show you just kind of an example of how I did this. So these are my family work socks that I'm knitting for my husband right now. And when I knit these stripes, because I'm knitting them two at a time, I talk about this on the podcast, I ended up cutting the yarn ends because I didn't want to deal with holding the, the yarns and carrying them up the side. So I just kind of cut them and that's why I have all these over here. But these ones right here at the top of the sock are extra long because these are the ones I'm going to weave in when I'm all done. They are wrapped around a little bread clip. I don't know if you can see that. And that little bread clip is just keeping them under control so I don't have really long ends hanging from the bottom of my sock, which I actually, not the greatest example because I should be using a bread clip to hold these together too. I just haven't done it yet. Um, but these ones were a little bit longer. And, and really, honestly, I could do this right now because it does make it, it just keeps everything organized. So I just take the yarn ends. So here's my bread clip. And I take the yarn ends and I kind of put them inside the bread clip like that and twist them around until all of them are secure, or most of them are secure inside the bread clip. And it's not gonna be perfect, but it's enough so that you just don't have a ton of stuff 
hanging down, getting caught on different things in your project bag. Again, this is a really extreme example because there's like a billion ends hanging out of the bottom of these socks. But typically you're gonna have a project with maybe one long strand that you're gonna use later for weaving in. This is just allows you to wind it up and like put it away. So it's not just hanging out of the bottom of your project. I, I know folks will say, well, why don't you just cut why don't you just leave a six inch tail? Why is your tail so long? And it's like, yeah, it's fine, I get it. it. The tails are long, but I like to have a long tail so that when I weave the ends in, I know I'm getting a nice clean woven in end and, and whatever. I like longer tails. That's just my, you know, pick your poison. But if you prefer to have a longer than six inch tail, or even if you have a six inch tail and you feel like that tail hanging out is just getting on your nerves, having something like a bread clip to wrap it around and just kind of get it out of the way so it's not getting dangly and confusing with all of the other things going on, especially if you're knitting something two at a time, it's just a tip, something to have on hand. You can actually see at the bottom of my bag here, I collect them. So whenever I, I have stopped because I have plenty, but you can start collecting them and then you always have them when you need them. So that's for me, that's what I have over here. I really gotta get all this stuff put away because I have a big mess on my table, but I so appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me today to chat about knitting notions. Let me know your favorite knitting notions down below in the comment section. Also keep posted, the podcast will be coming on Sunday, episode 66, and the Fiber for the People shop update is on Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. All of that information is down below in the description box. If you enjoyed yourself or took value from this video, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more. I'm posting twice a week on Wednesdays and on Sundays. And if you're a regular viewer of the podcast and you would like to support the channel, you can head over to the Wool Needles Hands merch shop and pick yourself up some fun merch. We have lots of cute t-shirts. Uh, there is a coffee mug with a painting by yours truly. It's very, um, I don't know, Jane Austen, I guess you could say, with a cute little phrase on the back, letting people know that you just don't have time for their shenanigans right now. Lots of cute stuff over there, and it's a really great way to help support the channel. It means so much to me. Thank you guys again. It was so lovely to spend this time with you. Until the next time we meet, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.